Whoa, three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show, and I've got a new friend on here. He's from outer space or someplace like that. His name is Wayne McFarland. Are you there, Wayne? Magic Brad, I am here. I have been counting the nanoseconds. <laughs> now seconds? What is a now second? Is that like present moment second? Nano, nano. That's like nano. doing a Kessel run in four parsecs, you know? Nanoseconds. You're kind of narrowing it down into like quantum physics kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So where are you located on this planet? It looks like you're out in the solar system somewhere. <laughs> well, now we are in Colorado Springs, but we were in L.A. for longer than I care to talk about. Long oh, time. the land of fruits and nuts. I spent some time there. Yes. <laughs> la la land. I noticed neither of us are there now. Well, I was out there because I got upset and frustrated and decided to do something different. I spent uh, 53 years in the same house and it was just like, I want to do something else. So I pulled up stakes and went out to LA and did nothing for a couple of years. And <laughs> I couldn't handle it. Well, if you're, if you're going to do nothing, that's the place to do it. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, the, the people out there, I look at like the East Coast in New York, they say what it is. They say this is what's going to happen and it is what it is. And then the Midwest, they never make a decision. They never make a decision. They can't, can't get anything to do anything. And then yeah. in LA, they say what they're going to do, but that's not really what they're going to do. <laughs> I love New York mainly because people walk right up to you and say, I'm going to smack you. And, yeah, they're and then serious. they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they do it. Yeah, I grew up in Minnesota and South Dakota, so I know oh. where I'm speaking. Yeah, so I'm, I'm right here, and you, you were in the South Dakota. I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I've been through South Dakota, and I saw the tree. Did you see the tree? There was uh, the one on top of the one hill, that yeah. tree. Yeah. yeah. Yep, I know it well. I, I did a magic gig out there in, I think it was Dickinson or something like that, way on the that's west North, side. That's North Dakota. Come on. Okay. Well, somewhere on they're the same, aren't they, north and south? You can't tell where you are. Yes. No. <laughs> but I remember I was driving and I saw red lights behind me. I thought, uh oh, what's this? And I kept on driving. This the road is like straight like an arrow. I see these lights. It took forever for this ambulance to finally catch up to me. <laughs> so uh, no, no, no. So you married and got kids? That kind of thing? What's that? Yeah, I'm married, been married a long time. In a, in a environment where people get divorced in 15 minutes, I think for 40 years now plus. Might as well. Stick with she it. is so lucky. It's amazing. <laughs> That's no, I gotta tell. I gotta tell you, uh, Brad. The my wife has her PhD in molecular biology. You've heard the term marrying above your station. I am living proof it can be done. Oh, there you go. And she's blessed, and you're you're just very gracious of giving her the opportunity, right? Exactly correct. <laughs> okay. When she was getting her PhD, she got her PhD from Caltech, and I got a te you know at Caltech, MIT, Harvard, that kind of thing, and I had a wonderful time. You know, I didn't have to do any work, but I got to go to the faculty club and and sure. meet, you know, meet all of these stunningly bright people, uh, and. I, well, she was getting a PhD. Poor thing was working her fingers to the bone, and I was at the faculty club having drinks. It was great. <laughs> well, I never went to college. I've got a DMA that I got through the School of Hard Knocks. What DMA stands for doesn't mean anything, but I've got one. There you go. And I'm the CEO, EIO, EIEIO of my own company. There, there, there you go. <laughs> what are you drinking there, Wayne? Not vodka, just water. Just water, okay. <laughs> I've got my magic brew here too. <laughs> so let's talk about what you do. I saw on your thing, your uh, proposal pro thing that came through about a book, and I can't even remember the name of the book because it's it's unusual. You got a couple okay, things. Okay, take a deep breath. Here we go. It's called Tales. Tales from the Day, available on Amazon. Oh God, I love it when I do that. Amazon and Barnes and Noble and good bookstores everywhere. Tales from the Day. Now, what day? Tale, let's give us a synopsis of the book and then let's talk about more details. Well, what happened was my, my wife and I, you know, the one with the PhD, we right. owned a, a software company, among other things, which we sold here not too long ago. And um, I've always loved to read, particularly memoirs and, 
and biographies. So, so I, I kind of got hooked on memoirs and I started reading a lot of them. And Brad, I got to tell you, most memoirs really suck. I, it's really, you know, they, they're, they're all kind of cut from the same mold. I stood and gazed at the mountain with a crooked smile, but straight teeth. And I said, there lies my destiny. And it doesn't happen like that. And, and you know, memoirs are full of things like leaving your bike on the lawn and playing kick the can until dark and stuff. And, and Brad, no one cares. No one cares. You know, I, I want to put my young relative to sleep. I start talking about stuff like that. And the snoring, you know, is, is overwhelming at the second sentence. The other thing that, that uh, I felt strongly is that life is, you know, in retrospect, you, you may, I think it's a human thing to try and make it look sort of planned. But in reality, it's not planned at all. You're just stepping into swamps and trying to do the best you can. And, yeah. and hopefully it has some coherence later on. So I thought, well, I'm going to write a memoir consisting of various really kind of weird events uh, made up as different chapters like the day they tried to kill us in Arkansas and, and each chapter being a complete story. And uh, when I did that, my publisher had a conniption fit. He said, no, no, that's not how it's done. You've got to have a starting point and lay the groundwork for drama and then have a narrative arc and move on to you know, fighting cancer and winning and then coming out the other end and becoming Pope. I mean, that's how you do it. And I said, well, I guess I'll take my chances. And so Tales from the Day is 27 chapters of things like the day we pitched the lone shark and things like that. And, uh, and as it turns out in our 240 character world, uh, it proved to be a pretty good approach, which of course, as you know, Brad, I totally planned from the beginning. Sure. Sure. <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense because, like, I talk with some people about, uh, like, like marketing, and everybody's trying to put these, uh, like, you generate the lead, and then you put them in an the autoresponder, and you send all this neuro-linguistic programming kind of copy to get them to persuade, and it never works that way. I remember uh, I used to produce trade shows, and I was putting flyers at a, at a co-op for people to come to our health ex expo. And one flew off the kiosk and blew across the parking lot. And I saw a lady grab it and looked at it. And she looked at me and put it in her bag, went to her car. And when I did the little survey at the event, sure enough, how did you hear about it? She says, I picked up a flyer at the Wedge Co-op. <laughs> so that's not how you market. You don't, <laughs> I call it dandelion marketing. You just kind of blow it and let the seeds flow wherever the wind blows, you know, because we yeah. aren't in control. It's like they say, you can, you can't adjust, the, you can't, you're not in control of the wind, but you can adjust the sails. And That's stuff it. Just yeah, kind of yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're exactly right. And the whole key I've always found is getting out there. Getting out there so you're in a position where the wind will blow it for you. But that, that really, I think, is the main goal. And sometimes you get it right, and sometimes not so much. Well, I think also if you believe in like a higher power kind of thing or how the universe kind of works, it, uh, it kind of brings things into place. So the people that need to see your book are going to find your book rather than having to shove it down their throats and try to convince them that they need it. Well, they do need it. I mean. Everybody? Well, absolutely. In fact, <laughs> the holidays are approaching, Magic Brad. So <laughs> okay. buy 50 or 60 copies and your shopping is done. That's it. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Did I mention it was Tales from the Day available on Amazon? Oh, oh I love it when I do that. There's got to be a link, but they could just Google the keyword Tales from a Day and they'd find it, right? Right. I do have a website, which is www.waynemcfarland.com. And my picture is on there. So that's one of the benefits of finding it. So that's the proof that it's actually you. That's exactly right. Because <laughs> you got your identity on it. A, little, uh, a lot of people go to the website and say, this can't be right. That's Brad Pitt. <laughs> but, but really, it's really me. Well, the style these days, they're all doing the hair thing, right? Sure. It always comes down to the hair, right? Every conversation I have. You know what? Please. Come on. <laughs> Stop already. It's not my fault. 
So this book, you know, if you think about the gifts thing, you might want to repackage it in different sizes. So you can just go get a bunch of them for all your friends and they're already packaged in different sizes. You put them under the tree. They're all getting the same thing, but they look different. Yeah, I think what you should do is give each person 28 of them and then they can open a new copy for each chapter. No. Well, that was a good idea. Yeah, no kidding. It would be perfect. And give them to friends. Yes. So and they won't be your friends long, but... How know. many pages? Uh, 190. That's consumable. Yeah. yeah. It also starts a good fire. After you oh. read it. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the, how many other books you got? Well... There's one other that I think is fit talking to talk about. It's called You're an Author, Don't Get Hustled. And what happened with Tales from the Day is I had a publisher, which is the normal route you're supposed to go. And um, when I noticed they weren't selling any books, I mean, that's what a publisher is supposed to do, right? I fired them, and in a couple of weeks, we sold more books than they had in a year, but who's counting? And when I put the book out there outside of the publisher, Brad, I got to tell you, the every flim flam con artist person in the galaxy, speaking of that, showed up on my doorstep. And, you know, talking about how they'd make the book a bestseller if I only wrote a check for, you know, a few hundred or a few thousand dollars. And, um, you know, <laughs> I even got conned on a couple of schemes. So I got so upset about it, I thought, you know, New authors probably need to have a checklist of, of things to watch for and when to know that they're, they're being conned. So, so, I wrote, so I wrote, you're an author, don't get hustled. So that's, not, that's sort of a memoir of your experience in that segment of your life, a little cutout. Yeah, yeah in a way, except it's very specific. About that's helpful because I know that that's exactly what happens. I mean, you talk about L.A., there was a big thing out there that I was savvy to. And, you know, hey, you want to get on the, in the movies, you need a headshot, you need a little bio, you need a... Yeah, yeah, those are great. It's just a bunch of fluff. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm sure running your blog, you probably get tons of email from people who are going to, you know, make your blog internationally famous if you just write them a check, right? So I suspect you're seeing a few of those roll your way too. Um, and, they do. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I was invited to speak at a seminar a while ago and if there had been rotten tomatoes in the audience, they would have been throwing them at me because they, the, the person was pitching. Well, here's a student to make your book a bestseller. And I said, no, what you got to do is write a good book. That's what you got to do. Uh, otherwise it's like, you know, publicizing movie where you have a big opening weekend. And then the movie sucks, and so word of mouth kills you. Next it does. week or two, you're done. Same thing with like what you're doing with your blog, which, by the way, I really, really admire. I do a lot of work. I think people don't realize how much work it is. Um, that you know, your blog will get to be the word will spread, and it'll get to be more famous than it is now if it's good. I mean, it's, it's a fairly straightforward formula, which goes back to what you were saying about things kind of throwing them out in the universe and the universe kind of nods or not. And, um, you know, you might be interested in, in that same seminar I was asked, what should you do to publicize a book? You know, because all the con artists want you to spend thousands on social media and do this and do that. And I said, there's, there's three things you do. First, you got to write a book that people want to read. And to, and to really know that, what you do is when you're done is find yourself a really good editor who's not a publisher, somebody with experience who can read your stuff. And if it sucks, they'll tell you. Right. My and wife is going through that right now. Yeah. And they'll also tell you what to do to fix it. And then the second thing you do is find people like Magic Brad. And, and that's the second thing you do. Uh, and the uh, and the third thing you do is press releases. Mm -hmm. There's a company out there called Send S E M D Normal Two Press, and for a couple hundred bucks, they'll send out a press release about whatever you're doing, and it goes to some real hitters. I mean, I got covered in the magazine for 
uh, theater in New York, for example. I mean, if I had called or contacted them, the, the only response I would have gotten was, go away, son, you bother me, you know? And uh, so an outfit like that is very inexpensive, and they really get you out there. Well, did Suppose I connect with you through that radio guest list? Yes. Yeah. You absolutely That's another did. one. That's really a, a good um, source for it. So these days yes. when you're writing words, it's just a matter of getting those words out there and people end up finding it rather than if someone comes to you, they have an agenda. You got to kind of be careful. So it's, it's nice that you're kind of paving the, paving the way, like pioneer blazing the trail for people. Because otherwise, I, I've heard of many people that end up hiring that coach to write their first book or yeah. someone to publish it and stuff. And there are no guarantees in any of this stuff. So there's no point in putting a bunch of money into something that yeah, because there's no, there's no guarantees. I mean, there's, you, you do what you can, you finish a piece you think is good, and maybe only you and your dog think it's good, but you, you know, you get it done. And then if you can, you know, what I recommend is going on a search for a good editor who doesn't yeah. also want to publish your book. Somebody who's got experience and they can read it over and give you tips and clean up what you've got. Well, that's exactly what my wife was doing. She's in the process of writing a book and her, her editor person said, quit trying to edit it, just write it. And then when she got it back, it had all the little marks on it and stuff. And she was kind of embarrassed, but it got done, you know, that, and that editor was able to, you know, clean it up a little bit rather than yeah. trying to do it yourself. That's what, an editor, that's what an editor does. And yeah, good. I'll tell your wife, good on her. It was a good move. It's kind of interesting, the, the concept, because it used to, people used to think, okay, I got to find myself a publisher, and they're going to give me some kind of advance or something like that, but good luck on that. And I, I've known a lot of people that have created books, and they, they end up being very good doorstops. Well, one thing to bear in mind about a publisher, you know, like everything else in our world today, that's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And so publishers, there's a few big barking dogs out there, you know, Random House and Simon and Schuster and so on. Uh, but 99.9% .9 of publishers now specialize in certain genre, genres like science fiction or young adult or romance or whatever. And you have possibly written the next To Kill a Mockingbird. But if you send it to a publisher that specializes in, you know, how to do woodworking, they're not going to take you on. So that's one thing I tell people now when you send out word to publishers you really need to research and find publishers that publish in your, in your genre, no matter what it may be. For sure. Because then at least you got a shot. And, uh, but a lot of people I know have broken their hearts sending out, you know, a thousand solicitation letters and probably 800 or 900 of those went to people who, no matter how good the book was, it's not in their area of expertise where they make right. their money. Back in so, the day, it used to be broadcasting. Nowadays, it's narrow casting. So if you're going to do something exactly. on how to do it woodworking, you better be real at dealing with people that do woodworking. That's exactly yeah. correct. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well, Wayne, I don't like to do these too long because people can't consume it all otherwise because there's only 24 hours in a day, you know? So how do we get a hold of you again? Is it uh, just your website or is that, is that the easiest mm -hmm. way? Just... Yeah, best way if people want to contact me for any reason, it's my website, waynemcfarland.com. And um, the two, as I say, my books are Tales from the Day and You're an Author, Don't Get Hustled, both available on Amazon. I will, um, go ahead. I was going to say, people should buy from Amazon because Jeff Bezos needs our money for That's that. true. Do you know he made $13 billion in one day last month? Kind of. It's like stock options or something, though. No, it's called growth of Amazon because of COVID. And everybody's so, doing that, shopping from yeah. remote. And the business, his business is going straight up. Of course, stock price rising with it. Well, on that note a little bit, because I bring up Amazon a lot, because what happened back in my day, before we used to actually talk to people, and this internet thing came along. And what that did, it did was it kicked the middleman out of the way, because now we can deal directly with people. We don't need an agent or a publisher. We can just deal directly with the distributor. And okay. then what Amazon did was stepped in and replaced the middleman because that's all they are. Is there's a bunch of merchants and there's a bunch of customers and they just bridge the gap and take a piece. That's right. 
And also there's one other thing about Amazon is they've got what in the business is called a long tail. And that what that means is that they don't stock anything. There's no shelving uh, requirement. So through Amazon, you can buy things that uh, if you went into a bookstore, say, you'd never find because they're out of print or the shelf space is too valuable. You can't, you can't put, you know, no, one, one knockoff on the shelf. So that's the other thing that's happening with the internet is that, you know, not just Amazon, but you can find virtually anything, uh, including a lot of stuff that you'd never find in stores just because it's not, for them, it's not profitable to stock it. But when you're bits and bytes, ones and zeros, and there's no shelf space and no warehouse. That's right. You know? Fascinating to me. Yep. I got a love-hate relationship with that internet thing. <laughs> Don't we all? Well, Wayne McFarland, I'm going to beam this up to the universe, and then I'll uh, send it out to you. I'll put your Amazon links in the little description on YouTube, too. And then if we can Thank share you. that YouTube video, I appreciate that. And uh, we'll get this out to the world. If you want to hang on, we can have a little chat other than that. I'm going to shut off the recording, put it in the can, and put it out to the world. Okay, I'll stick around until you tell me to go away. Okay, thanks, Wayne. See ya. Thanks, Brad.